gas station. Please like and subscribe. What's going on guys? Today I got a special one for you. This is the second episode, an add-on to the last one I just had. This is uh, the dual disc conversion. And uh, this is what I got going on the bike. So watch the whole video. I'm gonna be here with you guys having a beer and uh, explaining a little bit more what's going on here. So right there, there's a chinger on one of my dampeners. I had to file it down, make sure everything was gonna be okay with it, but. So, I talk about it more later on in the video, but I had a problem finding the bolt, and I just got to the point where I couldn't find the, th the right thread for it, so I just started making my own thread. It doesn't need to ever come off again, so that was my whole uh, thought process with this one. It was about two weeks of looking online and talking to different people and going to different bolt places and it got to the point where it was just like, I'm just going to put this grade 8 bolt in here. I should have like had it in like some sort of better vise or chain vise or something and then to where it wouldn't make marks on the dampener and then probably uh, use an impact it would have been a lot easier for me but I didn't have those tools so I just used what I got so I cut that bolt off got all the parts right here um, I don't know if I happen to I had a brand new seal kit I know it got messed up but okay, anyways, first this things first. Here. so it's one o'clock in the morning uh, last I recorded was about four or five days ago uh, it took me a while to get a hold of one of my friends uh, to try to get a lathe going I couldn't get it going by the time I did uh, I brought over the original bolt that went inside here and it's a uh, harder I mean excuse my language there but um uh, where is it oh right here so this is a 12 point it says right here on top of it. It's 12.9. This is. Uh, I took it to my machinist buddy. He laughed at me. He said, uh, Go find a bolt like this. I couldn't do that. I couldn't find a piece of all thread. Nothing. This is just a uh, fine thread 125. So this is a 14M125. 1.25 I believe and anyways this was not going to be used anyways so but um, I couldn't find anything and so what I ended up doing was just getting a bolt um, 9 sixteenths bolt and I just fucking ran it in there. Anyways, I got it going. This one over here was much better. But as you can see, the bolt sticks up a little higher. So I got it flush, perfect, just under flush. Um, this bolt sticks up a lot higher, and he was able to t t throw some tacks in here. One, two, three, there's four tacks. Yeah, there's four tacks right there, and this one looks way better than the other one did, and also, this one didn't have no Bondo inside there. I did try to Bondo that other one first, but I knew I wasn't going to do that, so I did it overnight to try to get my tap out because it got stuck, 
but um, it messed up the weld. And then some got inside of the thread over on the other one. It got inside the thread and that's why I had to drill it out. I had to drill a little bit bigger right here just to get some of that my buddy's welding rod or TIG rod or whatever. Shoot up my uh, all three of my taps so I and, and I was grinding the little I noticed what it was but I was grinding the metal anyways I got it as good as I could um, that TIG metal is super but just a little piece that was in there messed up uh, the tap and it wouldn't cut it it just cuts it the tap because it's way harder than the tap anyways I got it all cleaned up this was the worst of the two but it's good and we have the original 8 mil not original the original old school Harley 8 mil 125 and this is also a 12 point nine hardness uh, I just got this at Lowe's and then I got the nine sixteenths uh, grade eight that's nine sixteenths grade eight and that's what I tapped into uh, like I said if I had to do it again I would leave the bolt longer maybe a uh, half inch tap the sides then tap then drill and tap so first I would tack tack it make sure it was nice and clean then I would go and cut the bolt and um, drill it tap it and then you'd be set like this right here so now what we're going to be doing is putting the shocks together hopefully you guys got something out of that Pretty much, I had to do whatever I had to do to try to get that bolt to that hex I made on the bottom. Now, when you guys are running the bolt on the bottom with the lower, you should use an impact. I think I did it by hand, um, but sometimes to get those threads to grab correctly and not spin that you have to put the compression on it so that's what I did I had a stick because I was having a problem getting it in there by hand I had to just put compression on the spring but if you have an impact you probably not have that problem but I wanted to make sure it wasn't cross threaded and get it in there by hand nice and easy So these are the V-Rod lowers, like I was saying before, and um, I'm like inspecting it at the same time I'm putting it together, so making sure everything's right. So when you're doing seals you can sometimes just get a piece of PVC and just round the edge off of it so then you can get those seals pushed in there. I didn't round the edge enough on mine and it was hitting the top but uh, I still got it in there.
You really have to get those seals in there. I don't think I actually show me putting the dust cover on, but obviously the dust cover goes on and the clip here at the end, you just want to double check and get that thing inside of that groove and make sure it's snapped in in all positions, all sides of it. This is the part I was talking about, I had to put compression on it just to get that screw in. But again, I could have used an impact. It would have been easier. But it's just as easy to just put a little compression on the thing and tighten it up. So, had some silicone on the bottom of it. Hopefully it don't leak. Taking everything out of it, removing everything. I just had that stuff in there to compress it. Compress the dampener so I can get that bolt in. I just wanted to make sure everything was set in place with that seal with everything off. Everything felt good. And then I go in with all the pieces. Dampener, washer, cold emulator, another washer. Got my spring, it's race tech springs. I probably put another washer in there. We got 10 inches right here. Uh, it was a little stiff before, and uh, we're gonna take that down to nine and a half. Uh, that's what I did to the other side, and it seems a little soft. I can't wait to see how the bike feels. <clears throat> It'll bring me to about one inch of compression or pre-compression or whatever you want to call it. I forget what it's called right now. I'm having a brain fart. I think I set it up to where I was about one inch or maybe a half inch over the... Um, I think it was one inch with it full extended out it was one inch over and then so when you put the cap on you have to shove it down you almost need two people to do it it took me quite a bit to do it but uh with two people it's much easier i need to get those uh adjustable ones for the front those probably are a lot easier to put on the adjustable um, front fork adjusters compression adjusters or whatever they are I'd like to get a pair of those right here I'm just getting that oil and all the trying to get all that airflow out of there just going up and down with it um, working the seals in working trying to work all that air out of there as far as um, the oil, I just used the same um, 49 millimeter out of the manual, the description in the manual for um, the fluid. So whatever they recommended, I just used um, Honda oil. I believe that's what I believe that's Honda oil.
It's also, you have to read whatever uh, Race Tech recommends also. They might recommend a different um, oil, and I think that's what I ended up using, but then I just used Honda because they didn't have what I needed. I've always used Honda in all my bikes. You know, I really appreciate you guys stopping by. Again, if you guys are getting any information out of this, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe. If you're not getting anything out of this, I understand. But this is the part I was talking about with two people right here. This would be much easier with two people. And then I don't even get to show you that I put it on because the damn thing froze up. But I did get it on both of them by myself. to get any last drip I can in there I think I was about two ounces short between the two shocks so about an ounce a piece but I figured because I had the dampener and stuff I had more things in place that less oil could go in so I was not worried about an ounce or two again use what's recommended but sometimes you gotta fluctuate and you have to think about what's in your shocks and you have to think about the space that you're taking up and what's you know what's actually in there so that's what I did, I, I, and I know that there's more metal in there now, more space taken up, so using a little bit less oil wasn't that big of a deal to me. Again, this took me a while, but I did get it done. Those are the three inch um, extenders. And that's the GoPro freezing up on me. Anyways, guys, I appreciate it again. Thank you for stopping by. <coughs> the gas station, we're out. And remember, before you leave, please like and subscribe. See you on the next one.